All right, welcome back to the channel. Another how-to uh, video here. And we're gonna go back to the, uh, the modeling clay and plaster how-to video series. Uh, today we're going to be making something that I'm very, very excited to, uh, to share with everybody else. Uh, it's gonna make, uh, hopefully, make uh, everybody's life a lot easier, make, uh, make you be able to fish a lot more cost-effectively. But before I show you actually what we're going to be making with the plaster and the, uh, the clay, let's get this flattened out and uh, put into the Legos first. So again, just like the other videos, I just take the, the modeling clay. This stuff you can get at, again, Amazon. I'll leave the links in the description for, for this and some of the other uh, materials used. But again, I just take this uh, modeling clay, which is never hardening modeling clay. Um, and sometimes like right now it's really cold outside so I just stick it in the microwave for about a minute and 30 seconds get it soft and pliable and then again I go ahead and use a just a wooden dowel just to get everything kind of spread out and again we're gonna take the these Legos as I do with pretty much every uh, plaster or uh, clay uh, clay how-to video and we're gonna just kind of make the, the base with that Lego as the uh, as the container for this. So you want, you want the modeling clay to be, for, for this particular project, you're gonna want it to be maybe about a quarter inch thick. It doesn't have to be exact. But again, like I said, I'm really excited about this one because it's going to help a, a lot of you viewers out. Um, it helped me out. I mean, I already had the uh, the molds for these, so it's not. This isn't necessarily for me, but for a lot of you that uh, a lot of the viewers out there that don't want to or don't have the means of spending, you know, fifty, sixty, seventy bucks on a on a a metal mold to make these. This will be very, uh, very welcoming. All right, that's, that's pretty good. Let me see if we've got enough space there. Okay, perfect. And it's similar to the uh, one of the previous videos, when we have enough space there, I then just take a hammer and make sure that this in, inner edge leaves an imprint inner edge of this uh, this Legos container leaves a uh, a trace or an imprint on this modeling clay and then we could take our razor blade and cut along this either right in the middle or right along the inner edge of this imprint here so that way it fits snug inside that Lego container Set that aside. Perfect. Okay. That'll fit right. Okay, now for the grand reveal of what we're actually going to be making a plaster mold of jig heads I'm gonna be able to uh, make plaster mold of jig heads and the reason this is gonna we can do this is because the the plaster of Paris whether it's the the normal dat plaster of Paris or the uh, the harder uh, harder plaster that I'll again link put in the description which is about five times harder than regular resin well I'm sorry regular plaster the temperature of melted lead is 622 degrees and the temperature that plaster can withhold is quite a bit more than that so this will work and you can make your own jig heads with plaster and lead so similar to the uh, one of the previous videos that I did with the the micro jigs simply take the jig head that you want to mold and we're just going to put it halfway into 
the modeling clay. And one, one thing I want to note is kind of a, a very important part of this is that when you are uh, deciding which jig heads to model or which jig heads you want to mold and make replicas of, uh, keep in mind that you're going to need to find out and figure out which exact hook comes with this jig head. So with this one, I got, I get, you can get these anywhere, but these are uh, victory hooks for my jig heads. And you can get them in any size, but this particular size is a, a three aught for, for these. And again, you want it halfway. So half the lead head or jig head is going to be in the modeling clay and half it's going to be out. And we're going to pour the first layer of plaster on top of this. And then once that dries, we're going to take this off, peel the peel this modeling clay off, and then put a put an oil layer on it, and then pour a second layer of model or of uh, plaster on top of that, and then we'll separate the two, and that'll give you the mold for uh, pouring these uh, these jig heads. So this this looks about right. Again, you want about half in, half out. So that one's good. We'll go ahead and do this second one. And push that in. Be careful when you're pushing the uh, the hook in. It's a small area, and you don't want the screwdriver or what whatever you're using to push in there to actually leave an imprint in the clay as well. And we could take the third one. Put that right there. Perfect. Push that all the way in. Oops. And you'll be able to see the uh, the modeling clay coming through the eye a little bit, which is good. You want to make sure it goes through. Again, halfway or so. Excellent, that looks good. Make sure that modeling clay is up against that jig head. No space for the, uh, the plaster to seep through into the crack. Otherwise it may, or space I should say, not crack, but any space there. Otherwise it'll make for not an ideal mold. Okay, perfect. So those are in there nice. And I'll take my Lego piece, take it apart a little bit, so that way I can open it up a little and snug it or squeeze it, just kind of fit it right around. Should squeeze, the tighter the better, of course. So squeeze that right around, push down a little bit, make sure that's secure on the bottom, and then Take your Lego pieces and finish building. Now again, you want to push the modeling clay up against the Lego pieces, wherever you see, or whatever container you're using, doesn't have to be Legos. Push that around, make sure that's snug. And now, we have to create the pour spout, or the opening for the lead to go in so I just take a small piece of the modeling clay smaller than that even and kind of make a like a funnel funnel shape looks about right and then you're just gonna again match it up to this, match it up to the jig head. Sometimes you might have to stretch it out a little bit. And you want, you want the, obviously the top, this top, to be flush up against the edge of the container, whatever you're using, in this case it's Legos, and the bottom to be flush against the top of that jig head. Okay, so that looks about right. So now again, similar to when I made the previous video on the uh, 
the micro jigs. Now we're going to cut this in half. So we'll need the other half for when we pour the other, uh, pour the top layer of plaster. So you take this, put this all the way up against the container and push that down snug. So it's right up against the head of that jig head. Okay, so we'll leave that one aside, that, that top over here. Go ahead and make another one. Perfect, there we go. So now that's all set. And before we put the plaster in, I am going to add a little bit of the furniture oil to the lead pieces just to make sure that they don't, that the uh, plaster doesn't stick to those. In, in experience, I've done it with and without the, the oil, and it definitely comes apart easier when you have the oil on there. Doesn't have to be a lot, just barely. So you just, just barely enough to touch or, or to put a thin layer on the, uh, on the jig head. Cool. So now I'll go get the I'll get the plaster set up and uh, we'll pour that. Okay. So if you've never used plaster, it's very easy, very 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 easy to use, and it does have a relatively high uh, temperature tolerance. But for the for this video, again, if you've never used it, best to follow the instructions on the uh, package or on the the box, whatever kind of container the plaster is held in. Uh, for the first couple times, again, just follow the instructions to a T until you get comfortable with it and know exactly how it works, how it reacts with certain amounts of water. So again, you, for me, I don't want it to be real, li real liquidy. I don't want it to be real runny. I want it to be like a thin peanut butter, I guess you could call it. I don't want it real, again, don't want it real thick, but I do want it to be able to, to, to run a little bit. Um, you, you'll see. So go ahead and start mixing this up. You guys have no idea how excited I am to that this actually worked. Because jig heads, I don't know why, but they're extremely overpriced in the stores. I don't, I don't know why they're so much, but like for two of them with the, you know, the triangle shaped heads or whatever, it's like six bucks or like three dollars a piece. And even, even these types are like six for five or four or five dollars, whatever it is. And it's absolutely ridiculous. So the fact that this works, that I'm going to be able to show, show everyone how to do this on their own is awesome. It's going to be. Just a huge, huge money saver for everyone that watches the video. All right, so that that consistently turns out really, really good. Again, it's not like water, but it's not thick peanut butter. It's really good. It'll flow right. So first of all, what I do just to make sure I fill in all the little little voids and all the eyes and everything, I'll just take the stir stick with the plaster on it and put it into those spots first, making sure that I fill them in and there's no holes, or no, no I'm sorry, not holes, all, no bubbles, all the space, all the little tiny nooks and crannies get, I know for sure are filled and don't have, and if any holes or bubbles in them at all. Get that spread in there. Cool, okay. Now it's ready to pour, and I pour it to that third layer of Legos, because you, you definitely, with the heat, with the heat of the lead, you definitely need to have a thick and dense layer of plaster, so that way the heat doesn't uh, crack the plaster mold. That's one, one big, big key on this. So you need to have you need to make sure the mixture is right make sure it's thick enough to and not very porous 
So when the heat from that lead heats up the, the plaster, it doesn't crack it. Because I've experienced it does crack it if it's, if it's not mixed right. And you have to start all over. So I just tap this again just to do my best to get the bub any bubbles that are in the plaster up to the surface so they don't uh, interfere with the actual jig head itself. Okay, that's looking pretty good there. I think we're good. Excellent. Now, all you do is let that sit for about 45 minutes or so. I usually let it, the package says about 30 to 45 minutes or so. I let it go for an hour. So we'll be back in an hour to, to check on this and start the next process. Start the next step in the process. Say that five times fast. All right, let's check this first batch out. Let's see what we got here. Come on, Lego. Go. Get some of this off. All right. Now start peeling this off a little bit. There you have it. Get that pushed, that piece pushed back in there. All right, turned out pretty good. There's a few little issues, a few little imperfections in there, but other than that, turned out really smooth, really good. So now, what we do is a uh, similar to the you know the the micro jigs. We're now going to drill holes in here so that way the top layer of um, of plaster has something to grip grab onto so when you put the top of the plaster on and the mold it locks into place and doesn't slide around so we'll go ahead and get that situated right get that drill bit in here and then uh, drill a couple holes okay so we'll drill one there and again, the holes don't have to be deep. They just have to be deep enough for that top layer to sit in it and not, not move a lot. It should be good enough. I'll do one more. I'll do that. That's good enough. Okay. So get all that out of there. Excellent. Perfect. Now, <clears throat> you want to make sure you match the jig head to the slot. So, pulled it off like this. So, this jig head. Again, careful when you take these out so that way you don't poke yourself with the hook. Okay. Go ahead and match that one there. Okay, and remember these three halves where the pore spouts are basically. 
So this was the, the right, left, or right, middle, and left. So we go opposite because we flipped it over. Doesn't matter that much, but still do it. So this will go there. This one goes in the middle. And that sits right there. And we'll make sure that's flush against the Lego here in a moment when we get that in there. But now before we put the second layer on of plaster and put the Lego framework around it, now is when we put in the oil. Again, I use a furniture oil because it's thicker. Cooking oil tends to soak into the uh, into the plaster, but you want an oil that's going to sit on top and not soak in to create that separate allow that separation. If you tend to use a uh, like cooking oil or uh, any kind of thinner oil, it'll just soak right into the the plaster and won't actually be effective as a releasing agent for this. So try to use. You know, either a furniture oil or even, I think even like a wax-based uh, furniture polish would work as well too. So you can try that. Now when it's around the actual lead head, on this I do get the towel or something to get a the clumps away from the edge because you want that lead to be formed perfectly or that plaster sorry to fit perfectly around the uh, the lead if there's any spaces where it's simply just uh, plaster without any oil on it though the plast the top layer of plaster will stick to it so, and you don't want that get some of it out of these holes all right so that looks pretty good I think we should be fine there all right now go ahead and take the Legos again or again whatever base you're using and put everything back together This should be really snug. Okay, all ready now. Now I'll go ahead and mix the plaster and pour the second layer. Looks good enough. Let's get this poured in. Again, I'm going to take the plaster and put it onto the crevices first. You don't have to, but I do. I found, again, that there's less bubbles and less voids and a better mold created if you do this and get this into the tight crevices first. this poured Excellent. Same thing. Try to get the bubbles out, or at least up to the top as much as possible.
perfect. Again, same thing as the first one. Let that sit for 45 minutes to an hour. Come back and we'll see what we got. Alright, let's get this taken apart and see what we got here. A little bit easier that time. There we go. That looks perfect. Okay. Now we'll go ahead and let these dry and dehydrate out for about two or three days. And then we'll go ahead and make, make some jig heads. Pour some jig heads. You See you in a few days. Alright, actually before that, let's get, get these out. There we go. Looking good. All right, we'll give those a few days. Dry out and we'll come back and pour some jig heads. Okay, so the, it's been it's been a couple days now, and uh, these are pretty much uh, all dehydrated. Uh, but before you can actually pour the lead into these, uh, what you want to do, similar to when we were making the other video I made on making micro jigs, uh, you want to make sure there's no ledges that the lead will get stuck to or can get stuck to. Because if there are some ledges, you will have the, the lead will grip to it and it'll kind of <clears throat> it'll it'll break the mold. So anywhere where you see a, a shadow, where in the pour spout, so you can see a shadow here. <clears throat> you can see shadow here. Here, if you turn it around, you see them in here. Same with this side as well. So what I do is I take a you know small screwdriver, razor blade, or whatever, and just kind of flatten this or get rid of that that shadow get rid of that little ledge that the uh, the lead is going to grip on and it, I mean it's really easy it's not a hard process at all you just got to make sure you do it again otherwise it'll the lead with it being hot and once it does that drastic cool down it will stick or grip to these ledges and everywhere that it's basically gripping to all the all these places where there's shadows it's just going to break the mold so again we'll, we'll get rid of all these make these smooth and flush and that'll make for a, a much better a much better mold sorry i was out of screen for a while let me zoom out a little bit there we go all right
the next one. Now you guys actually see there's a, there must have been a bubble in the plaster. So it created a little hole right here. Uh, you don't want holes because that will definitely break the mold. So I'm going to try my best to just kind of open this up a bit. Don't have to be all the way. Just going to open it up to where the the lead can actually go into it, but still come out. We may not actually be able to use that cavity after we test it, but we'll see what happens. And so just about ready to uh, get the lead poured in but one thing i do want to note is when you purchase or go to make the mold off of say some jig heads that you buy definitely look at the box or the package cover to see what size the hook is so you're going to have uh, you know you're going to have a jig head that says it's quarter ounce or eighth ounce or half ounce which is fine that's just the overall weight of it but what you also need to pay attention to is the actual size of the of the hook itself, whether it's three, three uh, uh, four, two, two watt, uh, doesn't matter. Just pay attention to that when you go to uh, to make the mold, because you're going to need to buy those same exact hook sizes for this for any particular mold that you do. There are other ways that I found that you can make the actual the, the jig head itself and not have to use exact uh, size hooks and I'll, I'll do a separate video on that but for the sake of this video yes any whatever whatever uh, jig head or lead head you are molding make sure that you buy the same size hook for that jig for that mold rather so with that that's all done and I'll go ahead and turn the turn the lead on now and uh, come back and we'll See how this works, see how this mold works.
All right, now that we've uh, done the exciting part, making the actual jig head with your new mold, now we go ahead and do, do the trimming. So get rid of all these little uh, imperfections and little areas where the lead kind of went wide in the mold itself, but that's all easy. But again, the great part is, you don't got to spend a ton of money on the jig heads anymore. You can make any, any lead based jig head or any jig metal based jig head on your own now with, uh, with plaster. Don't have to buy the expensive, uh, molds anymore. You know, each of those molds is like 50 bucks. So you make, you know, you get a eighth ounce plus a quarter ounce and you're already out a hundred bucks just for the just the mold itself that doesn't include you know the amount that you paid or if you don't have any lead on hand any you know leftover lead you have to go buy it you can buy it from Amazon I'll leave a link in the description on this video for you know some good quality lead on on Amazon that you can get if you don't have any just lying around the house from other uh, like sliding egg sinkers or whatever but uh, there you have it again it's not the most beautiful thing in the world but uh, it does it's gonna do the job it's all matters to me I already kind of sanded this one down so it's fine some of these you'll have to do you know a little more imperfections than than others um, also to mention this is just the regular uh, regular plaster of Paris you can actually and again I'll leave a link to this also in the description but you can get what's called uh, perfect cast which supposedly is uh, five up to five times stronger than this uh, just regular standard plaster of Paris. So when you get to a mold, when you make a mold and you get your lures or your jig heads or whatnot exactly the way you want them, I recommend using the uh, the perfect cast because it is harder, it is more durable, so it doesn't uh, crack as much, it doesn't chip away. Like uh, like you could see some of these, you know, in there chipped away a little bit, right there it chipped away a little bit. Um, it is a little more expensive, but again, with it being harder and more durable, uh, you won't have to make as many molds. You won't have to worry about any chipping, and at least a, any a lot of chipping. It will chip a little bit if you're rough with it or if you, uh, you know, overuse it, whatnot. But if you're just making this, just here and you know, making jigs and lead heads here and there, it's going to work great. If you're doing this for production, making jig heads or or uh, casting lures for a production, I definitely recommend uh, you know making your own, but then uh, finding a uh, a CNC shop that can uh, you know do an aluminum a full cast aluminum mold for you, so you can do more production pours. But uh, yeah. I won't bore you with the rest, but hope you enjoyed the video. Hope the uh, hope you're able to get it handled. Uh, let me know in the comments if uh, you found this helpful, and see if uh, we might be able to do some more uh, some more videos. I got some other stuff in mind that I think will help everybody a lot. But uh, until those get done, uh, just let me know what any other things you would like me to to research or figure out if we can uh, make on our own. Other than that. Thank you for watching, take care, and go get some.